Hi there, Professor. What are you doing? Ah, uh, Chloe, you're home from school. I'm just checking to see what's on sale on Steam today. I've heard about Steam. What exactly is it? Interesting question that one. You're my assistant and you've never heard of it before? I've heard people talk about it in the college computer lab, but I never understood what it was. Well, you know what that means. Time to go to the ship of understanding? Exactly. Here in the ship of understanding any question you ask can be answered. The only bad questions are the ones never asked. It sure is a technical marvel. Think of it as our own ship of the imagination. That's a Neil deGrasse Tyson reference. Cool. Carl Sagan actually, but we're getting off topic. You wanted to know what Steam is. Yes, Professor. If you're familiar with Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network then you already have some grasp of what Steam is. I've got a PlayStation 4. It's really cool. The main difference with Steam is that it is for the PC and, like Xbox Live and PSN it has a store for buying games and keeps track of game achievements, but it also has a social network, built-in voice chat that works with any game, and then there's the Steam Workshop. What's the Steam Workshop? It is a library of user-created content for various games, otherwise known as mods. These include City Skylines, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Space Engineers, and more. Amazing. I had no idea. Where did this Steam come from? Steam launched with the sequel to Half-Life called Half-Life 2. Valve created Steam to solve two big problems. The first being one they encountered with the original Half-Life. And, the second being how to deal with all of the cheating during online play. What kind of problem did they have with the original Half-Life? I heard the game is on most everybody's greatest game of all time list. The problem was not everyone kept their copy of the game updated with the latest patches. This meant that if they tried to play online, they couldn't connect to servers that had the current patch version. This also complicated things for Valve's technical support. There was no way, at that time, to ensure everyone had the latest bug fixes and updates. I can see how that would be a problem. And, then, there were the cheaters. I used to play a lot of online games, but cheaters kind of ruined it for me. It was the same way for Half-Life players. They'd play and match online only to get owned by cheaters using third-party tools to give themselves an unfair advantage. The sad part is most of these cheaters think it is perfectly okay to cheat. It proves their superiority, in their own sense of twisted logic. That's sad. It should be a contest of skill and not a arms race of who has the better aimbot. VAC or Valve Anti-Cheat was introduced with Steam when it launched with Half-Life 2. It could detect when someone was using a third-party tool to cheat and ban them. I've heard people mention something called Punk Buster, what is that? That is a third-party anti-cheat program used by some games. However it has some issues, such as it installs itself as a multiple services in Windows and thus is always taking up some system resources. This is very different from Valve's approach which requires less system overhead. So, with Steam, Valve had the means to keep Half-Life 2 updated with the latest patches, and it also helped prevent bad actors from cheating in online games who ruin the fun for everyone else. Am I right, Professor? You're exactly right, Steam can automatically download updates to any game purchased from the Steam Store. No interaction from the user is required, you just have to keep Steam running in the background and it has a small resource footprint. But, that's just the beginning. There's more? Yes, Steam Cloud, supported by many games, is used to save game settings and game saves. The beauty of Steam is that your game library is tied to your username and not the machine you are currently on. So if you move to a new computer you can get all of your games back, and if they support Steam Cloud you can also get all of your saved games back too. PlayStation 4 does something like that but you have to be a PlayStation Plus subscriber to use it. I also forgot to mention that using Steam was free. There are a number of free and free to play games on Steam, so you only need to enter payment information when you actually buy something. Early access games on the Steam store are titles currently in production that are playable. Buying them early helps the developer fund their development. 
Think of it as something like Kickstarter. Interesting. A few very good games came from Kickstarter. A few successful games on Steam came from Early Access. Games like Space Engineers and Kerbal Space Program. In addition to games, Steam also has a growing library of applications for everything from video editing, 3D animation, and game and music creation. Steam sounds like something that would be pretty popular with PC gamers. Steam currently controls a whopping 70% market share right now, and has more active members than both Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network. But, there has to be a catch, right? As with anything, Steam isn't perfect, but when compared to the alternatives it is far far better. For instance, it wasn't until recently that people could get refunds for games they bought on Steam. You also cannot resell any of the games on Steam you currently own. There is currently a lawsuit in Europe that has the potential to change all of that. You can't resell downloaded games on Xbox One or PlayStation 4 so there's no big difference there. Despite its flaws and increasing competition the service is still flourishing, and their user base continues to grow. Especially now that they no longer focus just on games for Windows. What do you mean? Steam is currently available on both Mac OS X and Linux. Valve has even released their own Linux-based operating system called Steam OS, and it comes pre-installed on PCs called Steam Machines. I had no idea. I thought Linux was just for servers. That's a misnomer. There are millions of desktop Linux users, and many of them like playing games. The humble indie bundle proved there was a market for games on Linux. Today there are over 1000 games for Linux on Steam. And, you can buy a computer with SteamOS already installed for playing games? Yes, or if you already have a beefy Windows gaming rig you can use it to play your games on the television, when you aren't using the Steam machine to watch movies or listen to music. A lot of movies are on Steam now, including the Mad Max remake and the more recent Mad Max Fury Road. Movies and music are just the beginning. Wait, how do you use a Steam machine to play games installed on another computer? Easy, using Steam and home streaming. Similar to PlayStation Now, it is a free feature of Steam that lets you stream the games you own on either a Steam machine, any PC running Steam, or a dedicated streaming device called a Steam Link, which you connect to your television. But, don't most PC games require a mouse and keyboard? That's a bit bulky to use in the living room when you could just use a controller. Some games on Steam support an Xbox controller, but for those games that don't Valve created the Steam controller. The Steam controller? A marvelous device that resolves the problem of how to make keyboard and mouse only games work with a controller. Every single button on the controller can be mapped to a key on the keyboard. There is a traditional analog stick, and a touchpad which can give you the freedom of movement of a mouse. Haptic feedback provides tactile feedback to your controls. The D-pad is also a touchpad that is very customizable, and in addition to all of this the control has full 360 degree 6 axis motion controls that are very accurate. Each game can have its own separate controller profiles, which automatically activate when you launch that game. You can also share your controller profiles with other users on Steam. It should be noted that to use the configuration screen for the controller Steam needs to be in big picture mode. This is a full screen UI for Steam designed for televisions. There is yet another UI that is designed for VR headsets like at the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. So, this all comes with Steam? No, the Steam controller and Steam Link are all optional, they can be purchased from the Steam store. The Steam machines are also optional. If you already have a good gaming PC you probably don't need a Steam machine. A Steam Link and Steam controller will do if you want to play PC games in the living room on the couch. This is all pretty amazing. The last detail has to do more with the social networking features of Steam. When you buy games, some come with collectible virtual trading cards, and some people are willing to pay real-world money for them. In fact, there is a marketplace in Steam for selling in-game items from Team Fortress 2 and Dota 2. Steam Greenlight is a feature that lets community members vote on what new games make it on the Steam Store. And finally, you can watch your friends play games. Similar to how you can watch people play games on Twitch, you can also watch people play games on Steam.
There's no extra software to buy, it's all built into Steam and free to use. Maybe I should become a PC gamer. Yes, Chloe, join the glorious PC master race. Ha 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 ha. You are such a nerd, Professor. Well, I do have a PhD in nerdology and gaming theory. What the heck? This isn't our house. No, this is the wasteland of YouTube comments. My PC Master Race comment probably triggered a flame war. I absolutely can't stand fanboys. Not to worry, the cruelest punishment for an internet troll is ignoring them. So, what are we supposed to do now? We ask the good people to like, favorite and subscribe. That should help us get out of this predicament. While they're at it maybe we should remind them to check out Gamers Bay on Google+. If they're wanting a drama-free gaming community then they'll feel right at home. Also there's the Gamers Video Archive for Let's Play videos and walkthroughs. Also, they can share this video on social media like Facebook, Google+, Twitter and so on. I just hope there aren't any sandworms. Oh, crap.